Hey, hello, welcome to Mix Training. This is Better Mix, and today we're gonna see how to make an amazing looking flag in Houdini and export it to Unreal Engine. All right, so this is gonna be very simple, but there's a few things we're gonna need. So, all right, so the first thing we're gonna get is, let me just stop this guy. All right, so the first thing we're gonna need is this game development tool asset from the uh, GitHub, uh, so from SideFX GitHub account. So go there and get this, download this this uh, zip file, get it from here. Once you have it just extracted, like I have here, this is the content, I'm gonna grab these uh, three folders, copy those folders, go to my home uh, directory, my user folder for Houdini, and paste the three folders here. Just, I'm gonna say, just write into it and replace whatever is there. All right, so now that we uh, have that installed, if we open Houdini in the shelf, we're gonna have a new set of shelves, if we go to this little uh, triangle here, click on it, go to shelf sets, and there's a game development set there. So let's select that, and we have this set here. We have a few tools here. It's really amazing uh, set of tools, but this is the one that we're gonna use. So let's first create the, uh, let's create the flag first. So we're gonna create a tube for the pole. It's gonna be, let me just name this pole correctly. Get inside there. I'll uh, make the radius really small. The height uh, about maybe 10. Not 10 is too big. Let's go for the five. Uh, let's make the center uh, relative to the height by dragging that to the uh, parameter here and dividing by two. So this is just gonna get this height divided by two here all the time, so it stays on the floor there. So now let's create the flag itself. Let's make some end caps there. So let's create a grid and let's call this flag. Let's make this on the Y, X, Y plane. So it's facing the camera there. So now let's see ghost other objects here so we can see the pole there. We can scale this according to the size we want. So just make your flag the size you want for it and put it in position there. We are not gonna use any simulation here, so it's gonna be real simple to do. But you can use this method to actually export simulations as well. Okay, so first we're gonna add a mountain to deform this. You can see if I add a mountain, I'm gonna deform this. But we don't want to deform the whole thing. Let's go to yeah, it's very okay like that. And we don't want to deform it as much. Let's reduce the height a little bit. Uh, like about 1 or 1 1.5 or 2. It's okay. Depends on how much wind you want there. And to make this kind of animate, we're going to just offset the time, the uh, position in X here. If I scroll here, you can see, kind of see there is kind of waving. So we want that effect there. So we want, let's put dollar t here for time and hit play now you can see it's waving but it's going in the wrong direction so let's just invert this by a minus there there's our flag waving let's uh, see this in real time there you go seems like it's working it's waving in the wind it's this is going to be the total animation is going to be 72 frames long so let's just uh, make this 72 frames long Geometry is waving there in the wind, but it doesn't look like a flag in, uh, right now because it's moving all over the place. So we want to let's group uh, two points. Let's uh, select this one, two points here and create a group with those. And let's uh, put it before this. Check it. Put it here. Let's call this uh, pin group so it's gonna be points that are not gonna move but here we want in this we want actually the opposite so we want to move the whatever is not in the pin so let's create another group here 
we can go inside here in the combine tab create a new group here let's call it flag group and this group's gonna be it's gonna be the same as this one but inverted so this is gonna be exactly not this group so you're gonna get everything else but those so there we go now i can move those points here the flag group it's just gonna affect those points and it's gonna leave those points fixed to the uh pole there so they're not and they're not gonna move anymore all right so for the shape of the flag the flag should be like uh deforming this direction and we're gonna do something very simple for this we can actually deform it uh in geometry so let's select all these rows or points of points here this row like there and let's create a soft transform and let's just move it forward a little bit as much as you want your flag to deform then we can uh, control the soft radius here and you can see we are going to bend in our flag uh, I like to do the quadratic looks more uh, natural for this so just make sure you're points on the ends are not moving there we go we could actually maybe just constrain it to the flag but it's just gonna do something weird so we're just trying to not not move the edges there something like that it's pretty good so now this is also going to be before the uh the formation of this so now if we see this you can see that it's, it's deformed and it's also doing that waving animation there which is pretty cool now but it doesn't still doesn't look like a flag right it's still pretty simple it needs a little bit more no motion you can see it's moving around but it's not that good maybe the um, the amount of motion it's not enough you can see there's a little bit more motion there but what we really need is to move the flag like give it a little bit of gravity so for that, we're going to use another soft transform. I'm going to select this point. Uh, we could select any point here. Maybe let's pick that one. And again, create a soft transform. And this, again, is going to be expanded. Uh, let me change it to quadratic again. And what I'm going to do is just pull it down. And this is going to be the gravity for the flag. It's going to represent gravity but we don't want it to just be down there like that we want it to be moving so we're gonna just use an expression to move it up and down here in the y-axis so let's put a sign expression uh controlled by the frame the current frame so that's gonna be doing that so it's going up but it's pretty pretty slow so let's multiply the frame uh times four so you can see it's going up and down so now it's doing what we want it's going up and down but now let's multiply the frequency here 0 0.05 and that's going to give us uh, less movements going up and down like that maybe make it faster here 10 it's going down and up down and up you can see it's moving a little bit let me make this bigger see it's moving up but we don't want i don't want it to be up, going up like this from this point so we can actually wrap all this stuff into a parenthesis and then like minus 0 0.25 maybe and just drop the whole thing down now you can see it's going like that now if we see this node over here now you can see that's looking more like a flag maybe the mountain needs a little bit more deformation but that's looking pretty cool maybe even deform it a little bit more from the middle here just tweak uh, your parameters there to make your flag look the way you want it yeah i think that looks cool looks pretty cool from this side cool all right so now before we go we are gonna go back to the start of this and then do a uv texture because we need uvs for this we want to apply something to this we're going to uh, project in the C axis. We are looking to the C axis there. Let's uh, drop a quick UV, a quick shade here. And there we go. There's our UVs. They're looking pretty good. All right. Uh, instead of using that UV grid, let me select another texture. 
You can put whatever textures you want. Just gonna use uh, my logo there. There we go. Let me change the background color. And now I can just tweak this. Let me just tweak the scale of this. So we just got the flag there like that. And let me move it down. So I don't want the lower part of that. I just want the logo like that. Let's go a little bit on this axis so it covers the whole thing. There we go. So that's our flag. And since this is Houdini, if we go back here, everything's going to work. It's going to be the forming with the UVs we just did, right? Pretty cool. All right. So now let's make this loop because we don't want to export this and be like going from this point to this point and just not making sense. But you can see there's a jump between here and here. It's not the same shape there. But it, we are going to do something that's going to make sure that it's the same frame. You can see it's jumping from here to here. So let's do a time shift. And this time shift is going to say that our, at this frame, we're going to remove 71 frames, which means that this frame is going to be actually the same as, the, as this. So basically, frame one here and frame one here is going to be the same. So let me explain this again. So with time shift, when we are at frame 72, if we click here, you can see this is actually frame one now. So basically it's frame one on this node here. We can actually see this if we do a time shift on this, put delete this, put just frame one here. See so this is frame one. If we see this, these two frames match completely there. See it, this, so this at 72, it's gonna be frame one. So what we're gonna do is just blend. Let me delete this one. Blend within this and what we have from this result. So let's do a blend shape. It's gonna blend this value and this value. So let me just uh, call this wind. Save up the channel names, channel names here. So we have wind here, here. So what we want is at frame, at frame 72, we want to have this value here. And before, let's say about, let's say frame 50, we're going to keyframe this to one. So we are seeing the result of this chain, chain here. So let's I'll, I'll click on this or just right click, uh, set keyframe on there. And then go to frame 72 and drop this to zero. And again, give it a keyframe there. I'll, I'll, I'll click on that. Now, if we see frame one and frame 72 should be exactly the same. So what's happening is that it's going and then starts blending to this animation and then it's going to be totally seamless. You have now a looping animation and you can do this for any animation that you have in Houdini. You can just blend it like this. In this case, it's pretty simple because it's just a, a plane, but it, you can just do this really quickly. Okay, so now we need to bake this to Unreal. So now we have our two sections that we want to bake. All right, so before we export to Unreal Engine, we need to make these objects a uh, hundred times bigger. So let's, for the poll, we're just going to go and put a hundred here. And you can see it's way bigger now. And the flag, it's inside there, really small. For the flag, we're going to go back inside and put a transform here and make this hundred times bigger. Now that should match at the, as they did before. And we need this scale for Unreal Engine since the scale uh, in Unreal Engine it's way uh, bigger. So if you export this directly, it's gonna be the object's gonna be really really small. So now let's just select this object. We're gonna go to the game development shelf that we installed here, and press this vertex animation rig uh, tool here. Again, you need to select this node and then use this tool. 
Now it's going to do something and we go back now and you can see there's a new FBX result here. Let's turn off the flag. You can see I'm not looking at this anymore. And this is what I'm looking at. You can see this is the new one. And this, what happened is, is that a, the script created a bunch of bones. Let me see. Uh, do I have bones turned off? No, they're really small. You can see there's one bone for each vertex there. And that's what's driving the animation now. And now we can actually export this to Unreal Engine. So there we have, I just renamed this to flag. Let's go to file, export, film box. I'm just going to drag this guy here. And then I'm going to select a path to export. So let's select my flag, my FBX folder here. I'm going to call this flag to FBX. And accept. And I'm going to change the... Uh, frame range to my uh, frame range that I have here, 1 to 72. And uh, that's all I need to export the animation, export. So there we go, that's exported. Now let's ex export this pole here. Same thing, fill box, drag that one there. I'm gonna call this pole, pole. And no animation, this is just static. So let's just remove that and export. There we go. So that's it for Houdini. Let's go to Unreal now. All right, so now in Unreal, I have this scene, but let's just, let's start a new one, empty scene. And let's uh, put another folder here. Let's call this flag two, flag two. Inside here, I'm gonna import those files that we created. So here's my objects. So I'm gonna uh, drag the flag two here. And for the options, I need to export a skeletal mesh, import the mesh, and then I change this to animated time. By default, it's exported time, I think. So let's just change it to animated time and then import all. So it's going to import my flag and the animation that has uh, the animation that the flag has. So let's just close that and then uh, import the pole as well. Just drag it here as well. It's going to be really simple, no skeletal mesh at all, just one object. So import, close that. So let's uh, save all. Okay, so we have saved all these assets that we imported. Now we're going to drag the pole to the game. And there it is. Just reset the uh, transforms here. So it's at 000. We move the player from there. Player is going to be here. Now let's put the flag there. Again, re reset. And the flag, it seems like the flag is not there, like where's my flag? You can kind of see it in the shadow there, but the the only thing is that the material is not double-sided. So you can see it from the back. So let's double click on the material here. Select this. You can, you can see that this imports the texture for you and it's already assigned, which is pretty cool. Select the material, go down here and there's a two-sided section here. Enable that and save. Okay, now close that material. Now you can see it from both sides, which is pretty cool. So now, just focus on this guy. You can see I have my flag there, but right now if I play, it's not going to be animated. You can see it's just staying there. So to quickly just make this animated, just select it. Go here, use animation asset, and click the flag animation here. Now, if we play, now look at that. Our animation, it's looking cool in Unreal Engine. It's its in the shaded side, but you can see your flag. It's looking really cool, cool there. You can switch, the, uh, switch this side of the light here to see it better. And now let's explore this and you can see that's exactly your animation that you did in Houdini and it's perfectly looping there's no jumps you can use this flag for anything else you can ch change the texture make even uh, a better one and there you go so that's how you take an animated deformed mesh from Houdini to Unreal Engine and you can make different animations and import it as well all right, guys, hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please share and subscribe to the channel.
Again, thank you, and let's keep learning together. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!